the full Palmer carpal support splint. The function of this splint is to maintain the distal limb in a functional position, immobilize the carpus, metacarpals, and phalanges, support and stabilize carpal, metacarpal, and phalangeal joints, and protect healing structures and prevent undue stress. The patient that we use as an example is a female greyhound, age 9, with right carpal laxity resulting from a fall. The pattern is most easily made when the animal is lying down. Place a few sheets of paper towel under the animal's limb. With a magic marker, trace the shape of the limb. The tracing should go up about two-thirds the length of the ulna and should be made wide enough to go about half of the circumference of the limb. Make sure that the distal part of the pattern is large enough to accommodate the animal's foot, allowing enough room for the toes to abduct when the animal bears weight on that foot. Also, an extra inch or more of border should be left around the nails so that the edge of the splint can be curled up. This will prevent dirt and debris from getting into the splint. On each side of the paper pattern, mark the carpal joint and the proximal end of the main foot pad. Also, mark each side and the ends of the nails. After you have finished tracing your pattern and marking the specified locations, Use scissors to cut out the pattern. The cutout notches on each side of the digits will allow you to curl up the end of the splint without bunching excess material. Cut out a notch at each of the marked locations so that the thermoplastic material can be molded around the angles of the limb without bunching. After you have cut out the pattern, check it against the animal's limb to ensure that the length, width, and angle notches are correct. Make sure that the distal part of the pattern is large enough to accommodate the animal's foot. Using a waterproof marker or wax pencil, trace the pattern onto the thermoplastic sheet. Preheat the electric heating pan with about 2 inches of water. Bring the water to just under the boiling point, about 200 degrees. Place the thermoplastic material into the hot water. Using tongs, frequently check the pliability of the material and remove it when soft. Softening should take about one to three minutes. Place the material flat on a cotton towel and pat dry if necessary. Make sure that you don't fold the material since the softened material can stick to itself. When the material is soft, use scissors to cut out the rough pattern. While cutting, allow the bulk of the material to rest on the towel to prevent the material from stretching and losing its shape. If the material becomes rigid, reheat part or all of the material in the water as needed to re-soften it. Cut the final pattern from the freshly softened material. At this point, it is a good idea to round all of the corners of the splint to prevent potential irritation of the animal's skin.